She's been part of the WKRN Channel 2 weather team for a quarter of a century, but now she's saying goodbye. We caught up with News 2's Lisa Patton before her last day on the air. Well, there is a story behind getting to Nashville in my hometown because I grew up in Mount Juliet, graduated from Mount Juliet High School <clears throat> in 1979. Um, I worked in Knoxville. That was my, I, I went to school at UT in Knoxville. I got a broadcast journalism degree and worked in radio while I was in school. And then I kind of thought I wanted to be a sportscaster, but one of the local TV stations, you know, my name was out there from being on radio, uh, called me just as I graduated and said, would you come audition for our weekend weather slot? I said, well, the problem is I don't know anything about weather. And they said, that's all right, we'll, we'll teach you. And at that point, there weren't as many schooled meteorologists. There were, but not as many. There's a plethora now. Lots of kids are interested and go to school for meteorology. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't uncommon to, you know, kind of rip and read the wire, mm -hmm. which is how I started. I admit that. But mm -hmm. Topper Shutt, a great meteorologist, worked at WTVK in Knoxville, and he took me under his wing and started teaching me, uh, certainly not a college education, but starting to be taught by a mentor and so I learned a lot. Uh, I quickly went over to WATE in Knoxville which is actually a WKRN sister station these days mm -hmm. and I worked about four years there and then I moved to North Carolina and worked in the Raleigh-Durham market at WTVD. Well I knew that I eventually wanted to be back in Nashville. I mean it is such a great television market and historically it has been. Mm -hmm. So I met my husband in North Carolina. That was, you know, God's plan. That's why he put me there, no doubt. And I got mm -hmm. some great experience. I did weather, I did anchoring, I did news reporting. Uh, it was very exciting. It was hard to leave. They're mm -hmm. about halfway between the beach and the mountains. So, you know, <laughs> I really wanted to come home. So every time I would come home for a holiday or a vacation, I would bring air checks, mm -hmm. air checks. We don't do resumes, written resumes in television. Mm -hmm. We do visual resumes and that's mm -hmm. called an air check. Mm -hmm. So I would bring it to each news director at what was then the three TV stations. Right. I would just knock on the door and say, I just want you to know, I would love to be in Nashville when you have an opening. Mm -hmm. And about three and a half, four years into my stint in North Carolina, Bill Lord from WKRN called me, he said, you ready? I said, I'll be there as soon as I can get there. <laughs> so um, I moved home, literally. I mean, my husband and I moved in with my mom and dad while we looked for a home and uh, we ended up buying one on the same street they lived on and I grew up on and we're still there. We've let my sisters on the same street, so my children have been able to grow up with family. But um, yeah, when that opportunity opened, I was ready to jump in. I love North Carolina, mm -hmm. loved all the experience, but I knew I wanted to be in Nashville, and it's been a great fit. I mean, it, to, to work in your hometown is, a, is really a treat. Lisa Patton is tracking the heat from the Weather Center. Lisa? We're not going to catch a break anytime soon. Today's high was in the mid-90s. Again, it felt like it was 100 plus. 99 was the actual temperature down in Chattanooga. We could see temperatures climb like that here as well. It's not something that happens for everybody. Uh, and it, it just, you know, the hard part is I had a large graduating class, uh, around 300 of us, close to, give or take. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been able to watch me age on TV. So when we have our class reunions, I haven't been able to watch them age. I have to kind of guess, who are you? Oh, yeah. you know, you look different, but they've been able to kind of watch me. And uh, so they know who I am uh, pretty quickly, but it's really been fun. 25 years. I know you've covered all kinds of severe weather events. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of good days, but I'm sure there have been some tough days too. Can you talk about maybe just maybe maybe the top two or three weather events that you've covered that have left a, maybe a lasting impression on your, on your life? Well, obviously, storm tracking was the change in the weather world uh, that is so beneficial to people because it took a geographic program and the radar and allowed us to tell them where those storms were going and give them a heads up, give them a chance to get to safety. And uh, that was in the mid 90s. And uh, my news director at the time, Matthew Zellkind, uh, bought the Barron Storm Tracking System out of Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And it was the first of its kind. And uh, it was, you know, the greatest thing that had happened to television and to us here at News 2. And it was a big learning curve. Never seen that before, mm -hmm. but we jumped in with both feet. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the installer brought the system to News 2, uh, it was that next morning, we had a tornado warning up in the Sumner County area near Gallatin, and I called the trainer in his hotel room at about five o'clock in the morning. I said, you need to get over here. We're putting this thing on the air. He said, but I haven't trained you yet. I said, it's okay, you're gonna run it. I'm gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'll be right there. <laughs> and we started, 
like a flash. Mm -hmm. uh, I am sure the other TV stations didn't have it at that time. I'm sure they went, what is she doing? How is she doing that? Uh, but everybody, you know, kind of jumped on board pretty quickly. Um, we uh, then, of course, a couple of years later had the 1998 April 16th tornado. Boy, that was an eye opener. We had city cams then, that was still relatively new. We could see the debris flying as it came in from the west side of town. A little frightening, you know, uh, and boy, the responsibility, the burden of trying to protect people really became vivid at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went on for hours and hours tracking, of course, multiple storms. The one that came through Nashville that, you know, a lot of people will remember. I was reading the wire surface copy and it, it looked at one point like the building my mother worked in may have been hit. It turned out it was a different facility, but I didn't know that from reading it quickly. And I literally had to take a break. I said, Bob, I need you to, I need to gather myself. Mm -hmm. And it was going right toward my home and our, our road. And I, I needed to find out if my family was safe. Mm -hmm. Turns out my little girls, I had two at that time, I have three children now, but uh, they were in the closet. We don't have a basement. They were in the closet eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and my husband was on the front porch watching it go by. That was a no-no, that's not what I told them to do. I said, get inside, get to your safe place. He was on the phone with the neighbor across the street going, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm like, don't you do that again. And if you do, don't tell me. <laughs> so, so you get there with those kids and make sure they're, and he had them safe. They were, you know, all packed in. Um, but that was obviously something that was really eye-opening. And then of course, it was just a horrific day because we had our first uh, F5, they're now EF ratings, but an F5 down in Wayne and Lawrence County, you know, there was death involved in that day. So that's really, you know, something, every severe weather event, it takes me probably a week to be able to sleep well again. First of all, it's a huge adrenaline rush. People know how fast I can talk and I can cover a lot of area in a short amount of time. But that's because I feel like, you know, we have 50 counties we cover. There are a lot of people who need us. So that's something that I really have, you know, tried to do, get everybody the information they need as quickly as possible. Of course, the um, floods in 2010, that was probably the most emotional story for me. Uh, so many people were impacted. Friends of mine, dear friends of mine were impacted by it. I'd never asked my husband to put a life jacket in my car on my way to work before, but I did that day mm -hmm. after what I watched happen on I-24. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that next day I said, I need a life jacket. He has actually come to work with me with a chainsaw in the car before too, when ice storms happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm not sure we live in an old neighborhood with big trees. I'm not sure I can get there. And so he put the chainsaw in and come with me. Um, there have been a lot of tornado events that have been really sort of, you know, devastating for all of us. When we saw the, the tornado on the Murfreesboro camera going over I-24, mm -hmm. it just makes your heart stop. Mm -hmm. You know, this is real and people are in danger. Mm -hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, life was lost in that storm, too. So there have been so many different events. Uh, we live in an active weather area, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I guess it's part of the reason I'm a little tired. <laughs> I love doing it, but uh, you know, being on TV live every day is an adrenaline rush anyway. I've enjoyed it. I love doing it. But it, you know, it, when you use that high energy level, you get tired faster, I guess, the older, older you get. But to have those storm days, I mean, I literally have gone as long as eight hours nonstop by myself. Usually I have a partner, but occasionally it happens when you don't, you know. We have real lives too. We go on vacation or get sick or have emergencies. But uh, Davis Nolan is like a brother to me. He, uh, we, we almost can finish each other's sentences. We are a storm tracking duo. And, uh, you know, we don't even have to think about who's going to do what when it's the two of us tracking storms. So I'm going to miss that. He's the best. He's been a mentor, a friend, a brother, a great colleague. He's, you know, been so willing to teach me more about meteorology and forecasting over all these years. I mean, just every day he teaches me something new. So, you know, while I didn't start with any knowledge of weather, over all these years I've, I've been forecasting my own forecast for television for many, many, many years now, even though I don't have the college degree and I refuse to call myself a meteorologist because people who do deserve that title. Right. But I do my own forecasting, so we're probably all wrong about the same amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> have you enjoyed it overall, would you oh, say? Yeah. It's like putting a puzzle together every day, so it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to work and you get all these pieces to the puzzle, and the shape changes every day of each one of those pieces. So it's, it's always sort of a challenge to put that forecast together and 
make sure you're giving people the information they need to plan their next day. That's what it's all about, or to keep them safe. So uh, I have certainly enjoyed that. I've enjoyed the interaction with the viewers. You know, it's not just me looking into an empty camera and not seeing them. I do see the people I meet in church, at the ballpark, mm -hmm. uh, you know, out shopping at Kroger's or Publix or wherever, and, and just, you know, different I mean, I'm out there. I, my family's active and we live life in Middle Tennessee. And so I've had a chance to meet a lot of the viewers who have depended on us. And they honestly see me as family. I'm in their living room every night, you know, or at their kitchen table, basically, you know. So uh, I understand when they say you're like family. I get it. You are like family to me, too. So uh, that's going to be odd. Was, was, was there one reason maybe that, that sticks out now in your mind that you said maybe it's, it's time? Well, you know, I've been a full-time working mom, and any full-time working mom will tell you, you can do it, but it takes a toll, and it means you probably don't have a lot of time for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I wanted to take some time for me while I was still young enough to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, the industry, you know, the job has gotten busier and busier, more shows, more weather, it seems, mm -hmm. um, and social media. You know, that's a full-time job in its own right. Mm -hmm. And you want to have this interaction. It's all great. It's just, I just was kind of ready to take a break. And really what I would love is a year's sabbatical and then to come back. Mm -hmm. But sabbaticals aren't real. That means somebody's paying you to take that year off. Those don't really exist <laughs> as far as I can tell. So I, I didn't really know any other way to do it except just to say, you know, maybe it's time to just take a break, take a little breather for me. I've got lots of stacks. We homeschooled our children all these years. Oh, wow. My husband has been a stay-at-home dad, so we kind of did things a little flip-flopped. It's not uncommon now. It was when we started. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to be a part of their schooling. That's the whole point of the reason we did that. I worked nights. I would have never seen them except on Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't do that. I'm, I'm more mom than I am weather girl on TV. I guarantee you that. Right. Uh, and so I wanted that interaction and that involvement with them. So that mean, meant pretty busy days before I even came to work. As a matter of fact, there were many days when I came to work to relax a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's been a busy life, a great life, a great career. I just need a little breather, you know, just to relax a little bit, maybe sleep through thunder and wear my pajamas on a snow day. <laughs> I hope it snows a lot this winter, actually. <laughs> and after working countless hours during her 25 years at Channel 2, I think we would all agree she's earned her time off. So, Here's wishing Lisa a lot of snowy days this winter and a happy retirement from a place she's called her home away from home since 1991. Reporting in Nashville, Barry Hyatt, NCTV. We're still in the muggy mid-90s.